For those of you who are tuning in to see a challenge today, don't worry, that's coming up Friday. We're still compiling some Canadian foods for our Canadian snack taste test challenge. That's coming up Friday. But today we're continuing on with the seemingly unending saga of the story of how we met, got engaged, and got married. I think this is like episode six? Seven? Today we're going to cover the topics of school and slash planning, uh, our wedding party, and our first apartment. So let's get down to it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and check out our other YouTube channel for new videos coming out every day. Go to twoinazoo.com and hit subscribe while you're there. Here we go. So most brides are heavily into details. I'm not. I'm not a detail person. I have a vision and that's all that I have. Um, so basically, I was uh, had a full-time job, I was taking four classes, and I was trying to plan a wedding. So basically what I did is I told my mom colors, what I, what I envisioned the uh, reception and the church to look like, yeah. and she kind of just took it and ran, which is perfect because I didn't want to be in the details anyway. Um, so that was kind of the planning. I, we picked out colors, like I think we've said in another, it was like more like a periwinkle and yeah, you silver. And I, you and I actually did that. I was there the night at her parents' house. Where to we picking were, out colors. We had like this, like what you guys did, you narrowed it down to like, uh, it was like a two maroon. colors. Yeah, it was like a maroon or a periwinkle. Well, no, by the time I was in it, maroon wasn't even in it anymore. It was a blue and a purple. It was periwinkle mm -hmm. blue and this purple... It was, it was lighter than this color like purple. Like a lilac. Uh, like a, yeah, probably like a lilac. So yeah, the maroon wasn't even in it anymore. You all had narrowed it down to two and you were trying to decide between the two. And that's where I came in and said, I like that periwinkle blue. And you had yeah. already decided on silver as the, um, the, accent, color. the accent color. So I liked um, it. So we kind of just picked out tux vest and I think that same night at that, that rings a bell. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, uh, Mike's more into details, but because of my schedule, um, I wasn't, so that kind of knocked out him on a lot of the details because yeah. I kind of just said, this is what I want, this is what I don't want, and here you go. Um, so basically, Mike was able to pick the chocolate fountain. Um, and the, what that the boys, almost didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, what the boys wore, and that was about it. And basically, uh, I didn't even start picking out dresses. My mom found a dress and said, hey, what do you think about this? Um, yeah. For the bridesmaids, and I said, perfect. It was on sale, it was on clearance, and they had all the sizes that we needed. Yeah. Um, and then we had a friend I was there that, that was night altered. Too. Yeah, the friend that altered. I was there the night you ordered them, I think. I think Wasn't so. Wasn't I? I think so. That seems to ring a bell. Um, so, cheap dress, which was awesome. Everyone like was on a budget. like $36 per. Something ridiculous like that. 32 or 36 that. on clearance. Yeah. Worked out great. Yeah, it did. Uh, it was the kind of dress that looked flattering no matter... What yeah, size what's, or body, what body build or yeah. whatever you are. So. Um, so that was really Everyone fun. So basically, I, I mean, I like... My, even my dress shopping, we went to David's Bridal, and the first dress I tried on was the one I picked. Um, Which is so, amazing. That never happened. Yeah. Sure. Well, you didn't have Pinterest, and you have all this junk back then that you Confusing had to, you. Yeah, that you had to have so many <laughs> styles and stuff. I kind of just said, I like this flower. We, we were debating between roses and hydrangeas, and we went hydrangeas. Um, yeah. We were going to do fresh so or uh, fake. And we went fake because we had a friend that is amazing at designing floral arrangements, and she did it. So um, and they looked they looked real. It she looked amazing. amazing. She did a great job. She did a great job. So and we have them all till this day, yeah. right? I mean, our yeah. our um, your bouquet is out. Is it out in that that mm -hmm. little hutch thing? Yeah, it's in our kitchen. You may see sometimes in our vlogs if you look in the background. Whenever we're standing in the kitchen, you can see this entire cabinet filled with wedding yeah. candles and stuff and her bouquet is still in there. So that's kind of like the planning. So basically I told my mom what I wanted, what I didn't want, and she kind of just ran with it um, and included me on the bare, like the essentials and the, the stuff. yeah, the little stuff. I didn't really care. Um, so the dress was easy. The shoes were easy. We did like a one stop Saturday, one stop shop at David's bridal and I was able to get everything plus the veil. So I didn't have these major weekend hurdles where uh thing went things went awry and i you know couldn't make a decision even if i thought it was a bad decision i would have made it i went because i didn't have time to to, to you know rethink right. my decisions right i went to um men's warehouse for uh our tuxes and i wish i hadn't um <laughs> it i mean That's they were all right but the, the experience leading up to the wedding was basically flawless. It was great. I went in there, picked all the colors, all the vests, the styles, the texture of the vest, the sty style and cut of the suit, 
or of the of the the tux. Um, everything was just great, except on the day of the wedding, one of my groomsmen showed up in a completely different outfit uh, from everyone else. They had somehow ordered him a different cut of suit, which was like a three quarter length suit. Um, and he was the only one in a three quarter length suit. Everyone you else was in. Really tell. He, because of his build, I don't think you could tell at the time. Um, my brother had the wrong shoes. Oh, that's right. Her brother had. Yeah, it was like men's warehouse just completely botched Rock the order, <laughs> completely messed up the order, and then would do nothing about it after the fact. It, they uh, they were not impressive. I, I to this day I I don't go to men's warehouse unless I have to just because it was a bad experience. On the day of, they couldn't couldn't and wouldn't do anything about it and we let them know early in the morning you know things don't match did you get the wrong suit and they they weren't even going to try and get it to us or fix it or anything so that's crazy thanks men's warehouse um at least it was on <laughs> his end and not my end because that would have been a disaster yeah the men are willing to be like oh whatever we don't match but if if melanie had oh, been on her word. side of the church that morning seeing Dresses bridesmaids not, not matching and oh floral oh, and floral arrangements been... missing or something she'd been freaking out oh so. my word it would have been it would have been horrible yeah it, it was good horrible. that it was on our side so that was that was the planning probably there's probably not a lot more to say about the planning it, it just wasn't, happened so it, yeah, fast it wasn't it wasn't a normal like stressful time my mom kind of just took it and, r and ran with it. She was the wedding planner for all intents yeah. and purposes. Yep. So, so because of that, I think there were details or situations where I wish that I had been more involved. Hindsight. But I was so consumed with trying to finish school and trying to work full time and trying to plan a wedding. And it was just like, oh, too many. Like, I don't like we. I like it was like details were just not my strong suit. So it's okay. It worked out. It was a wonderful wedding. Yeah. Um, but I'm still that way. I don't like getting nitty gritty in the details. She likes the big picture. Don't yep. bother me with the details. Can't be bothered with them. Nope. So the next big thing was um, as the planning continued on and on, we came to the point where you pick your wedding party. Bridesmaids and groomsmen. And how many are you going to have on either side? Where are they going to stand? What are they going to do? Uh, how are they going to be involved in the ceremony? All that fun stuff. Oh, and, and the um, the ring bearer and the flower girl. So those were kind of easy for us. My oldest nephew, uh, Johnny, John, uh, was, let's see, how old was he back then? 10 or 11. No, he was even younger than that. He was nine. The year we got married, he was nine or eight? Eight? He, was... he would have just turned nine. He would have just turned nine, I think. Yeah, that's right. Days before, he just turned nine. So he was a little guy. And uh, it was a no-brainer. We knew he was going to be the the ring bear, and then the flower girl. We I don't think we had a hard time with that either. We knew we wanted it to be the daughter of some friends of ours, cute little girl, and she did a great job. She was animated. She's an animated, outgoing little girl, so she wasn't shy about it either. So those were very easy decisions. And then when it came to choosing all the adults, that's where we were like, oh my goodness. Uh, we wrote out the lists, and we were like, how do you cut anybody from this list? So we ended up just having seven on each side. And I liked it. I liked 14 that we had people. A big, I liked that we had a big party, so like on, a wedding party. So you got, it, made it, a fun, it made it a fun, enjoyable day. It, it really did. So you got the 14 people. You got you and I. And the flower girl. And the flower girl and the ring bear and the, um, the minister. There were 19 people on stage. That's a pretty big wedding party. Um, and... and you know, group on stage. So we we ended up though um, having some situ a situation where as we got closer to the wedding, certain people couldn't participate because of one of them had to drop. Uh, two of them actually, I think, had to drop because of work. work, and then one of them had a death in the family. Like um, three days before the wedding. The week of the wedding. Yeah. So we were scrambling there at the last minute to replace her, um, and we had also replaced the other two back when they each had to cancel and it actually created this opportunity for us to welcome in some friends of ours to be included who had become more close to us as the wedding got closer uh, Thomas and Donna and they meant they still mean a lot to us in our history because when we were dating they were very close to us and they poured into us they invited us over to play cards and dominoes mm -hmm. countless times <laughs> and and to disciple us um, encourage us hold us accountable um, which every young couple attracted to each other in their courtship but wanting to save themselves for marriage needs. You need people around you encouraging you to 
stay steadfast until the wedding night. Um, and uh, they were just awesome. So even though it was it was sad that Jordan and Lauren couldn't be involved in our wedding, it did create an opportunity for us to have Donna and Thomas included. And then and then we had everyone else. We had Ian. Let's see if we can name them all. We had Ian and Renee. Renee. We had Natalia and TC. TC. Tyler and Brandy. Brandy. Jordan and or, Jordan. well, Jordan was an original replaced by Thomas. Lauren was an original replaced by Donna. And then we had. Who else? Who am I missing? Your brother, Bro Brian, Brian, and Gloria Lise. We, her name, Glory, is what everyone calls her. And then, um, last but not least, my brother-in-law, John, and her ma matron. matron of honor was my, my sister, Barb. And Amanda would have been my maid of honor. Right. So and I would have had both. I would have had both. Right. But, again, like... Uh, and Amanda was replaced by Hannah. By Hannah. So, Hannah was in the, the final run. Um, but uh, it was really cool, to, to, too, that we chose Barb and John to be in that position because Barb and John are, how do you just define Barb and John? <laughs> like John's kind of like a dad to me. He's obviously a big brother to me. Uh, Barb is like a sister, sister to her, like the sister she's never had. Right. And uh, they were just so close to us and we spent so much time with them like constantly when we were dating, we were always at their house. We were, we, we, we were there for Christmas morning. I mean, who do you spend Christmas yeah. morning with the people you're absolutely closest to? Uh, Caleb's first Christmas morning, we were at Barb and John's house. We saw a video of mm -hmm. it. Um, so we were so close to them. When it came time for me to choose my, my best man, it was a no-brainer that John should be it. And then and, and the Melanie felt that Barb should be her matron of honor. And, um, and Melanie also had a maid of honor, like she said, that would have been Amanda. Um, so that was really cool that my sister and brother-in-law got to be intimately involved, like really close involved. And like they were there three feet from us when we took our vows and, and we're looking at our faces when we took them. And I still remember John's face was just so bewildered. Like <laughs> he got to be there and that close. It was like really cool for him too. And I, obviously for my sister, she was crying a lot. Um, <laughs> but that's, so that's our wedding party, a big wedding party and a very fun wedding party. Our wedding that's weekend was really fun because of the people we chose. They made it a blast such a blast to be around those people so that's our wedding party and then uh, the last thing we want to talk about today was our first apartment um when let's see april well before april i think back in january so about we got we got married in august so i think around january we started really talking like we need to make a decision where are we going to live in eight months when we get married or we don't want to live with our parents we want to have a place of our own and, you know, the options are, I mean, you basically get an apartment or try to rent a house or what, or, or yeah. live in someone's spare room or their garage. I mean, there's, there's very limited options, especially these days for a couple starting out. Very, very, very few people go into marriage owning a home. So renting is your, is your main option. And, um, we started looking at apartments and I had some friends who lived in an apartment complex and, uh, they... They liked it, they liked their apartment, and we had gone through many apartment complexes. We looked at, a, at a few, that. we looked at a few of them, but we did our looking online. We looked at prices. Oh, that's what it is. I'm like, yeah. I don't remember going to anywhere. We didn't go anywhere. No, we, we did it all online. We looked at like floor plans and, and everything we looked at, we knew the neighborhood it was in because we were looking in our own county. We like, we know, oh yeah, that one's over here. We know exactly the kind of neighborhoods that it's surrounded right. by. We ended up going there and meeting like someone there who took us to a unit and said this is not the one that's going to be available but right. this is the same model as the one that's going to become available in April and we basically had two choices we could move in or I could because we were not going to live together before marriage we don't think that's a wise thing to do no offense to anyone who's ever done it it's just we knew that for these two that meant we were going to have sex positively absolutely there's just how do you live with that that temptation and not have sex. So uh, we wanted to save ourselves. So we knew we were not going to live together. And, um, but this apartment complex says we have the unit that you want available. It's going to be available in April. And we're like, oh, okay. Do you have another one that's going to be available? We sure do. It's going to be available in September. And we're like, oh, that's way too late. We don't, what are we going to do for that right. month? Again, we're, we don't want to live with anyone when we get married. We want to be fully on our own. So we took that 
that unit that was available in April. Which I think was smart because you had never been, you had never lived out of out of home. Nope. Like I had, away from home. Mm -mm. I had never gone away to college. Any college experience I'd had, I'd lived at home. I'd commuted to college and came back and slept in the same bed that I grew that I lived in, uh, slept in as a teenager. So I had never lived on my own. I didn't know what it was like to do anything to care for myself, provide for myself fully. And even when I moved out, I still took my laundry back to my parents' and house. I did not. Yeah, because I didn't have a laundry, uh, oh, I did not have a washer oh, yeah. dryer in, in the unit yet. we rented. We didn't buy a washer dryer until we'd been married for a few months. And a few months of us not having one and having to go to the laundromat and watching her struggle because she was the main laundry person in our house, I was like, forget it, we need to buy one. We gotta do what we can to buy one. So, um... Anyways, so I got the experience of living on my own for four months, and it was pretty cool. I liked it. It was it was neat. It was um, an experience for sure, just being there alone, doing whatever I want, coming and going as I please. I mean, it, it kind of went by super fast. I don't, I honestly don't have a lot of memories about those four months, quite honestly, because I was never home. Because I would wake up, I'd go to work, and when I would get off at five, I might come home and change, and then I'm out, I'm going to be with her because we're going to plan or go on a date or something. Like, we were together every day of the week, but we, um, when, when I lived there, we had a rule that she wasn't going to come over by herself. If she ever did come over, it was because I was... To drop something off. Well, I don't even know that you did that really that much. I don't remember that because the only times I ever remember you there was wasn't when... Wasn't dark. Was with no, never, never at night. At night. Um, and I think it was like when TC and Marissa were there, some friends of ours that were dating at the time, they were there at the same time you were there. Um, some, yeah, well, Tyler Ian and Brandy, like the same, the same people who were, some of the same people who were in our wedding. What'd you say? Ian lived there. Uh, yeah, Ian, another guy in my wedding, he lived in the same apartment complex. So he was there every once in a while maybe would stop by or something. I don't know. I just don't have a lot of memories because I was barely there. We basically moved some stuff in there so I could live there. Yeah, I wasn't in there a lot. I had a, I had like the same bed set that I had growing up. I brought that with me. So one room was set up with all that furniture and it was, so it was kind of like, it was weird. It was like being at home, but not at home. But I was only there to sleep at night. Otherwise I was out on a date with her or planning with her and, or, or, or every once in a while I'd go back home and spend time with my mom because she was going through withdrawals of being an empty nester. <laughs> For the first time yes. ever, poor girl. Um, and I'm glad I did that. We, I would actually go to her house every Thursday and watch Survivor, Survivor. with her. Uh, we loved the show Survivor back then, so that was our thing. Like for those four months, I would go back home, watch Survivor with my mom, spend time with her. Um, but uh, yeah, that was a cool apartment. It was really neat. It had like a loft upstairs, a loft inside, inside the unit because the unit was like vaulted ceilings, yeah. super high it was nice. and. Way up there was a loft. It's, it was really cool. A lot of special memories there. So that's our first place. And that's it for today's video. Uh, we're continuing to move closer and closer to the wedding. Now we're getting to like, oh my goodness, the next topics have to be what? Rehearsal. Rehearsal dinner, bachelor party, some of that cool stuff. And oh, yeah. it, oh boy, that, good experience. And, and now we're getting into the section where we have plenty of wedding video. Funny stories to tell you about our wedding. And uh, we look forward to sharing all that with you. If you like this video, though, give it a like. Leave a comment down below in the comment section. And uh, tell us about your wedding. If you're a married person, tell us some funny stories. We'd love to hear some of your funny stories or things that happened to you. Tell us some funny stories from your courtship or, or dating days. Uh, otherwise, I hit that uh, subscribe button. And don't forget to share this video and share this channel. And we'll see you next time on Just the Two. But today we're continuing... oldest nephew. Mm -hmm. Got that? Yeah.